Steve Harvey. I hear y'all take vacations together. When I came oh, to yeah. Chicago and I was doing negotiator, Bernie took care of me. Just like the Rhonda, Rhonda and Bernie were high school sweethearts at that very same time. And Bernie was the best of us because he closed our show. Right. Because he was just like... Hi there. The Welcome to Relax Brew. It appears that Samuel L. Jackson has a fairly interesting story to impart about his relationship with Steve Harvey. Presently, you know, Samuel L. Jackson is generally conscious while discussing his partners, yet this time, he's not keeping down. Incidentally, Jackson has been staying away from Steve Harvey, and there's a very valid justification behind it. Steve Harvey, I hear you all travel together on the yacht or something to that effect. Indeed, we get on the boat with enchantment and treats. Steve and Marjorie have their own boat. Jackson isn't precisely Steve's most diehard follower, and he's chosen to let the cat out of the bag on why Steve Harvey, one self-broadcasted lord of satire, has scoured Samuel erroneously. So, for what reason does Jackson hold such a low assessment of Steve Harvey? What's the story behind their fracture? Keep close by, on the grounds that we're going to uncover every one of the delicious subtleties. Good. People, don't bother standing by anymore. We should start in the amusement world, where huge names frequently meet up. We have Samuel L. Jackson and Steve Harvey. You'd think they'd be companions, particularly given their common African-American foundation. Yet, it's an incredible inverse. These two have seldom run into each other, and Samuel has implied in interviews that he's not precisely Steve's most diehard follower. I love the way that when I came to Chicago and I was the moderator, Bernie dealt with me. He took me out to play golf. As a matter of fact, the main time I was hit by a golf ball presently, this could seem like regular stage rivalry yet there's something entirely different about it. Samuel's abhorrence for Harvey goes past expert contention. It's not on the grounds that Samuel thinks Steve is certainly not an extraordinary performer. There's a more profound story here, one associated with Samuel's close buddy, who likewise is Harvey's opponent, Bernie. Presently, you discussed how there was practically another visit. Isn't that so? In any case, there was basically a beef between Bernie McIntosh and Steve Harvey. Indeed. Yet not every person likes him. In any case, he's viewed as one of the most outstanding comics of his experience with a lifelong that has endured for nearly 30 years. He's done stand-up satire, acted in motion pictures, won grants for facilitating television programs, composed well-known books, began organizations, and aided individuals out of luck. Presently, here's where it gets intriguing. In the amusement world, famous people frequently become companions like Samuel L. Jackson was with Bernie McIntosh and Steve Harvey with Martin Lawrence. In any case, Samuel L. Jackson and Steve Harvey are unique. They don't appear to get along. It's a convoluted piece. Samuel L. Jackson doesn't appear to accept that Steve Harvey is essentially as extraordinary as he says he is, both in his work and personally. He's been clearly disliking Steve throughout the long term. But rather, things got considerably more intriguing as of late when Samuel L. Jackson discussed a gathering with Steve Harvey during an excursion to the sea a couple of years prior. Some time ago, a few fascinating pictures appeared on the web. They had Samuel L. Jackson and his significant other in them, spending time with Steve Harvey and his better half during an excursion since individuals had close to zero insight into their fellowship then. So everybody expected they were great mates. The titles even said stuff like Life on the Sea and Rave Buddies. Steve Harvey. Samuel L. Jackson and Sorcery Johnson delighted on July 4 on an extravagance yacht with their spouses. Presently, we should get out ahead a little. Samuel L. Jackson later recounted the genuine story. He said that their gathering wasn't arranged in any way. He and his better half were simply going to their getaway destination for the year when, by some coincidence, they found Steve Harvey and his significant other. Assuming that you watched Samuel L. Jackson discuss it you could see that he believed everybody should realize that gathering Steve was a cheerful mishap. We should uncover why Samuel L. Jackson loves Steve Harvey and how everything interacts with Bernie McIntosh. At the point when Steve Harvey and Bernie McIntosh were in a similar satire bunch, there was a major issue. Steve Harvey appeared to be more intrigued by himself than cooperating collectively, which didn't agree with the others. To comprehend the origin story, how about we return to the mid-2000s? On the off chance that you were near, you could recall a popular satire visit called the First Rulers of Parody. In any case, if not, you probably won't have the foggiest idea about the full story of Steve Harvey's profession. During this visit, Steve Harvey and three different comics, D. L. This visit wasn't simply a major cash cow. It likewise tremendously affected current satire shows and was the best visit at that point. 
Every one of these jokesters had their own style. Steve Harvey was smooth, yet at times a bit intense for the crowd. Bernie McIntosh's extreme style addressed difficult issues through his satire. It appears Steve Harvey could have felt envious of Bernie McIntosh's interesting style, which prompted a dependable quarrel between them as of late. A. The musician from The Visit let the cat out of the bag about their conflicts. Furthermore, this news has created a ruckus on the web. The reports about issues between Steve Harvey and Bernie McIntosh during the first rulers of satire visit have now been affirmed. Cedric, who's additionally important for the visit with D. L. Hewley, Steve Harvey and Bernie McIntosh, has affirmed that the two entertainers didn't get along, he said. Better believe it, no doubt. Well, you know, they were the sort of folks that the two of them were apex predators. You know, similar to the two of them. They just saw it in an unexpected way. Do you understand what I'm talking about? In any case, by the day's end, they had the option to get past it very effectively. Is it genuine that Stephen and Bernie clashed? Better believe it. Better believe it. Well, you know, they were the sort of folks that the two of them were extremely confident men. You know, similar to the two of them, you be aware, they just saw it as unique. You understand what I'm talking about? Yet, by the day's end, they had the option to overcome it. Cedric referenced that the quarrel between Steve Harvey and Bernie McIntosh was an integral reason they didn't do another visit together. Yet, he likewise said that the visit's advertiser, who has a major head, assumed a part in it as well. So it was a blend of both the fight and the advertiser's self-image that prompted the end of their joint effort. Yet, in a 2003 meeting with GQ magazine, Bernie McIntosh said Steve Harvey was envious of his prosperity and, surprisingly, attempted to prevent him from getting film jobs. In 2010, Steve Harvey discussed what Bernie McIntosh said in a meeting. He was harmed that Bernie McIntosh, his previous companion, had expressed those things. Steve said I was annoyed with the first since it simply wasn't accurate. Me and Bernie had a ton of great times together. And afterward, this article in GQ emerged and put this load of horrendous stuff in there. B said he never said it. I needed to believe in him. Many individuals didn't completely accept Steve Harvey's side of the story and weren't timid about saying as much. Some could have done without Steve Harvey much and thought he behaved like he was superior to other dark jokesters, including Bernie and Cedric. Certain individuals even shared stories that made Steve Harvey look terrible. They said that when Bernie McIntosh got a job in the film Seas 11, Steve Harvey attempted to remove it from him. Steve went to individuals in control and said he'd work for less cash. However, they said no. What's more, Bernie McIntosh got the part. This story caused it to seem like Steve Harvey was truly aggressive. Here's the reason Samuel Jackson could have generally disapproved of Steve Harvey, Samuel Jackson, and Bernie McIntosh were extremely dear companions, not simply co-stars. They acted together in a film called Soul Men, where they played bandmates on an excursion. This film became significant after Bernie McIntosh died. Indeed, even prior to seeing the completed film, Samuel Jackson had discussed Bernie McIntosh's passing. He considered Bernie McIntosh a companion and had plans with him for their C's 11 co-stars. Be that as it may, Bernie McIntosh got truly occupied with his program, The Bernie McIntosh Show, during his ascent to distinction so they didn't get to get to know one another. The finish of Soul Men honored Bernie McIntosh and Isaac Hayes, and Samuel Jackson considered doing that. Losing Bernie McIntosh enormously influenced individuals, making the film, particularly the chief, Malcolm D. Lee. So while realizing about Samuel Jackson's companionship with Bernie McIntosh makes sense of why he could have contradicted Steve Harvey, it's likewise essential to take note that Steve Harvey had his own form of what occurred after Bernie McIntosh died. Steve Harvey shared that Bernie's widow, Rhonda McCullough, assisted him with moving past their fight. Steve felt that Rhonda knew reality with regards to their issues, and her help was a defining moment for him. He portrayed it as a purging moment where he could relinquish numerous repressed sentiments. While we actually don't know precisely why they had a quarrel, Steve's confirmation of a purifying second suggests there was something critical between them. While Steve Harvey made one more stride in this cycle by dedicating an episode of his syndicated program to recollect and observe Bernie McIntosh during this recognition, Steve, D.L. Hewley and Cedric the Performer made an extraordinary declaration. They proclaimed November 14 the as Bernie McIntosh Day in Chicago, where Bernie had solid associations. This declaration profoundly moved Bernie McIntosh's relatives, and Steve Harvey offered genuine counsel on observing Bernie's life. He urged everybody to recall Bernie with appreciation for both the extreme and the great times, continuously finding humor even in tough spots. Regardless of Steve Harvey's endeavors to patch the past, 
Many fans actually question his earnestness and have voiced their distrust via virtual entertainment, reprimanding his activities. One of them composed, Indeed, this is valid, and I've been sharp on Steve Harvey from that point forward. Bernie said, This is the one thing that hurt him the most in the business. Out of the relative multitude of things he'd had to deal with in amusement, Bernie said this was just horrible. It's not difficult to see the reason why a few people don't have a high assessment of Steve Harvey. His life has been disputable notwithstanding his popularity and parody and his forthright style on radio and television. Subscribe Relax Brew for more videos.